So now we're going to tie together our knowledge of the zero product property and the greatest common factor, and we're going to solve polynomial equations by factoring out the greatest common factor. So we're now going to tie these two topics together. We're going to first factor out the greatest common factor. Because notice here that we cannot use a zero product property as is because there's currently no product. Yes, there is a zero here, and that's all fine and dandy, but the zero product property stems from a product. Factoring is our way of turning this into a product, hence why factoring and zero product property tie together. So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at 12x and 32x, and we're going to factor out the greatest common factor. And when I look at 12 and 32, I notice that both of these, their greatest common numerical factor is 4. And then I also notice that they both contain at least one x. They contain an x to the first. At least that. So I'm going to factor that out in front. So here I'm going to undistribute the 4x. Inside of here I get 12 divided by 4 is 3, and the x is cancel. I then get plus 32 divided by 4 is 8. x squared over x to the first, 2 minus 1 leaves me with x to the first on the inside. So here I have factored out the greatest common factor. You can see it right here. My greatest common factor is 4x. Then from here what I notice is I now have a product. So I have two things being multiplied that equal 0. You can see that right here. Hence, I can now use the zero product property. I can state I have two items that are being multiplied that ultimately equal zero, which means that in order to find a solution, one of these two items needs to equal zero. So I can take 4x and set that equal to zero, and I can take 3 plus 8x and set that equal to zero, and then I can solve each little mini equation. So I divide both sides by 4 here, and I find that x could equal 0, or if I subtract 3 here, and then I divide by 8, or my other option is that x is equal to negative 3 eighths. So here I have two values for x that if I were to take them and plug them back into my original equation, they would make that original equation equal to 0. So let's practice this with a couple more examples. Remember, we need to factor each first in order to turn this into a product where we can utilize a zero product property. So when I look first at these two terms, what I notice is they're both divisible by at least 2, and they both contain at least 1y. So their greatest common factor is 2y. And if I factor out a 2y, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and y squared over y to the first is just y, 1y. Then I take plus a negative, because I'm going to use keep change change, negative 14 divided by 2 is a negative 7, the y over y cancels out. So I'm left with 4y plus negative 7 times the 2y on the outside is equal to 0. And because here I can see I have a product that is equal to 0, I can now utilize the zero product property. So I have something times something equals zero, which means I can set each little part equal to zero, and then solve to find the y value that makes each little part equal zero. So I start here by dividing by two, so I find y could equal zero, or if I add seven, and get 4y is equal to 7 divided by 4, or y is equal to 7 over 4. Okay, next example. What I see here is I have negative 15a cubed minus 21a squared. Since they both contain a negative, I'm going to try factoring out a negative number. So I notice they're both divisible by negative 3, and then they both contain at least 2a's. So I'm going to use negative 3a squared as my greatest common factor. And then I have negative 15 over negative 3, which is 5. a to the third over a squared, so 3 minus 2 is just a to the first. And then I have plus negative 21 over negative 3 is 7. And then the a squareds cancel out. 
So I have now rewritten this into factored form. And what I notice here is that I have a multiplication of two items that are equaling zero. So I have the zero product property. So what I can do as a result is set each little part equal. So I have negative 3a squared could equal zero or 5a plus 7 could equal zero. So I start by dividing each side by a negative 3. So I have a squared equals zero. I then need to think, okay, the only thing to the power of 2, only thing times itself that will equal 0 is 0. So a is equal to 0. And then the other option is we subtract 7. So we have 5a is negative 7, divide by 5. My other option is that a could be equal to negative 7 fifths. So the next thing we need to look at is what happens when we don't have a zero as a part of our problem. Because we know that in order to utilize the zero product property, we have to have something that equals zero. And the problem if we look on the screen currently is that we don't see anything that equals zero. But what we can do is we can use our knowledge of equations to rewrite this. So notice here that I have items on both sides of the equation. So let's try to rewrite them so that both terms are on the same side of the equation. And we can do that by simply subtracting 60y cubed from each side. And as we do that, we'll end up with 12y to the fourth plus a negative 60y cubed. And this will now equal 0 since we moved it to the other side of the equation. So now notice that we have this 0 part of the zero product property. So all we need to do if we don't have it set equal to zero is we just need to rewrite our equation by undoing things so that everything is on the same side of the equation. Now from here we can move on to factoring to get the product part of our zero product property. So what I notice here is that the greatest common factor between 12 and 60 is 12 itself. They are both divisible by 12. I then also notice that they both contain a at least a y to the third. So what I can do is I can undistribute that or factor out 12 y to the third. 12 divided by 12 is 1. y to the fourth over y to the third is 4 minus 3, so that's y to the first. Plus, we have negative 60 over 12 is negative 5, and then the y's cancel out. So here we now have something times something is equal to zero. So we have our zero product property once again. And once we have that zero product property, we can take each item, so we have 12y cubed, we can set that equal to zero, and then we have 1y plus negative five, we can set that equal to zero, and then we solve each mini equation. So here we divide by 12, then we have y cubed equals zero. Well, if I just think about it, the only thing times itself three times, that will equal zero is zero itself, so y equals zero is one option, or if I add five to each side, y equals five is my second option. And those are the two values that if we put them back into that original equation, they will make that equation true. So let's solve two more together. What I notice here in this first problem is that I don't have the zero part of the zero product property, so I need to get all of the terms together on the same side of the equation. I do so by subtracting 14a squared from each side. So then from here I rewrite this to be 8a cubed plus a negative 14a squared is equal to 0. And then from here I know that I need to factor this to get the product part of the zero product property. So I look for a term that each of these have in common, so I'm trying to factor out the greatest common factor. I notice that they're both divisible by 2, and they both contain at least an a squared. So if I factor that 2a squared out in front, I'm essentially undoing the distributive property. 8 divided by 2 is 4. a to the third over a squared is 3 minus 2, leaving me with 1a. Then I have plus negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7, and then the a squareds cancel. So now I can see that I have my zero product property because I have something times something equals zero. 
So I can take each of these two little parts and set them equal to zero. So I have 2a squared could equal zero or 4a plus negative 7 could equal zero. So from here, I divide both sides by 2. I have a squared is equal to 0. Well, the only thing squared that equals 0 is 0 itself. Or my other option is I add 7 to each side. So I have 4a is equal to 7 divided by 4. Or a is equal to 7 fourths. Then if I look at my second example here, again, I notice that I don't have all of my terms together on the same side, so I don't have the zero part of the zero product property. So I start by subtracting 3n squared from each side. So here I have 9n plus a negative 3n squared is equal to zero. I then need to rewrite this by factoring to get the product part of the zero product property. And I notice that these each contain a greatest common numerical factor of 3, and then they each contain at least 1n. So I can factor a 3n out in front, and then I also get 3, because 9 divided by 3 is 3, the n's cancel, plus negative 3 over 3 is a negative 1, n squared over n is 2 minus 1, which leaves me with just n, and that equals 0. So then from here I notice that I have a product. I have something times something equals the zero. So I have the zero product property yet again. So then from here I can set each little mini portion equal to zero. So I have three plus negative one n equals zero. Divide both sides by three. I find that n can equal zero or Subtract 3, subtract 3, so I have negative 1n equals negative 3, divide by negative 1, or n could equal 3. So the last thing we need to touch on in this video is when do we just factor and when do we solve for x? Because you've now seen examples where we just factor and we stop in factored form, and you've seen examples where we keep going and we solve for values for x. And the difference stems from the fact of if you have an equation, if you have an equation, an equation means you are going to solve and you're going to find values for x. If there's no equation, there is no solving. All you can do is rewrite it in a different way. So be very, very careful as you work. Do not assume that you can solve anything. Notice that there's no equal sign in this expression here. It's just an expression asking to be rewritten using factoring. So read your directions really carefully and read the statement very carefully. Is there an equal sign or is there not an equal sign?